You know, I should have called this how I study for Cisco exams because there's no real definitive way to study. You got to use what works for you, but let me give you some tips. Okay, my first tip is a no-brainer. You have to go to the Cisco website, pull up the exam topics for the one that you're going to pass, and start printing this list off and making sure that you're studying the right stuff, right? You got to know what to study. Okay, now I want to paint a scenario for you. Imagine that somebody came up to you and said, I'm going to give you a million dollars if I come to your house tomorrow and it is spotless. I can't find a dust bag. What are you going to do? You're going to sit there and scrub the floor. You're going to clean. I mean, you would sit there with a toothbrush scrubbing every single crack all night because you want the million dollars. You're motivated, right? So when it comes to an exam and studying, this is not like reading a Tom Clancy novel. You're not going to be like, oh, oh, I just got to read this Cisco press book or I've got to, you know, like you've got to have a motivation to do it. For me, people come to me, they're like, oh, Jeremy, you're so smart. Uh, you've got all these certifications. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm motivated because I don't want to stand up in front of a whole group of people and talk to them about a topic that I don't know about or I'm not certified in because I'll get crucified. I have built in motivation to do that. And what I found was when I was trying to study topics that I wasn't going to teach a class for, like I wanted to learn VMware, but I didn't really have any class that I was planning to teach for that. I was like, this is hard. You know, I kept getting distracted, going all over the place until I finally reset my mind I like tri I like spoke to myself I'm like Jeremy I'm gonna teach this to somebody I have a class that I'm gonna teach next week on this you better start studying and it, it, like I had to seriously just keep telling myself that fool myself and I would suggest you do the same that you would say okay I need to teach this to somebody and maybe you do maybe you go back to the office and tell somebody about subnetting or MPLS or whatever you're learning about uh, because that's gonna be your motivation that that frames that that that's your framework for when you're reading that book like oh ooh, I gotta I gotta know more about this I gotta understand this absolutely build a lab environment. Whether you use GNS3 emulated, buy some physical gear, set up a Cisco call manager server, whatever. Whatever environment you're in, Cisco gears their exam for real world. So it, without the hands-on practice, you're not going to really know when you get into those simulations which direction to go. So then use that lab to prove stuff to yourself. When you're reading a book and it says, oh, this is the output that we got, see if you can duplicate that output. When you're watching a video on CBT Nuggets, see if you can do what the instructor is doing in your own environment because it'll send you in a million different directions on tangents and learning all kind of good stuff. Then gauge your level of knowledge. Describe, configure, or troubleshoot. You got to look at each topic on that exam objective list from Cisco's website. You have to say, okay, can I describe uh, LAN WAN features? I mean, that's that's one level. Now, can I go to somebody and tell them I know what LAN WAN operations of feature are? Uh, can I configure? I'm trying to. <laughs> these aren't configuration topics. Can I configure uh, RIP version two? I would say that's a step beyond describing. You not only know what it is, but you now know how to configure it. The ultimate level of knowledge is going to be troubleshooting. If something's broken, not only can I describe it, can I configure it, but do I know how to? fix it and I know where to look for that. Now, I will tell you, I am not at troubleshooting skill level on every exam objective when I go in. I look and I kind of say, okay, that's. I feel like that's a fringe topic. You got to get the feel. You're like, okay, IPv6, I bet you that's going to be a little bit of a fringe topic. Now, I'm just using that as an example. So I might say, well, I can get to a configure level or I've even gone in sometimes and I'm like, I can describe and I'm crossing my fingers that they don't have some configuration or even worse yet, troubleshooting on that topic. Sometimes you got to take that calculated risk because you can't be a master of everything. You'll never get there. Now, some people say, well, you know, just schedule the exam. You can always reschedule it as you get closer to it. No, you cannot. I'm telling you, you got to motivate yourself. If you think, oh, well, I can reschedule this exam for up to a year, it's going to take you a year to get that exam done. You're going to be like, oh, well, oh, you know, once you bump it once, the, the damage is done. Now you're like, oh, I can, I just call them and I bump the date. So never, ever reschedule exam. I'm serious. Like if you say I'm going to be sitting in a testing environment that Friday and I am not going to move it, you're going to be so much more motivated going back to this to really learn that contact and put the time in it. It doesn't become one of those things like, like, oh, I could have, should have, would, oh, oh, well, I, I've got to go see this movie tonight, whatever, right? So practice exams. A lot of people say, do you go buy practice exams, Jeremy? Uh, no, I do not. I look at the practice exam price and I go, good grief, I might as well go take the exam for the amount it costs the, uh, to buy a practice exam. However, if a buddy of mine has a practice exam, I'll say, hey, mind if I look over your shoulder? Can I use those? Uh, well, of course, under proper licensing, but it, you know, it's just not something I've, I've ever bought because I'd much rather take the real exam and see the real questions and fail than pay the price for a practice exam. 
program. Finally, get mad, get disappointed, and then do it all over again. Missing an exam is the worst, it, but it happens. It happens. That I, I, I've pulled up my transcript. My wife came in once and was looking over my shoulder, and, I was, and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, look at all these exams I've taken. She's like, Wow. And, you know, the, it's going through her mind. Each one of those is $150, you know, but, but she goes, you failed a lot of exams. I'm like, hey, hey, that's enough of that. You know, we don't need that here. You know, it's just, it happens when you go in. These exams are tough. So give yourself the grace to say, you know what? That's lame. I'm bummed out, but I'm not going to get up. I'm going to do it all over again. This is the core of my study strategy. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.